Uh, rest breaks throughout the day end up making you more productive and more creative. And there's research that bears this out. You'll see in the book, in the back of the book, there's about 980 uh, research papers cited. And so of the more than four or 5,000 I read, so you can refer to the studies there. Um, the idea is that even though it looks like you're not doing anything, if you're staring out the window for 15 minutes every couple hours, or listening to music, or looking at uh, some art, uh, maybe just uh, reading, reading literature. This puts you in a different brain mode than the, the tense, sort of stressed out work mode. And neuroscientists have named these two modes. The stressed out work mode is called the task positive network. It's a network of brain regions that are evolved to keep you focused. They're, they're what allowed us to harness fire and build the pyramids and discover penicillin and decode the human genome. But they're not what wrote Handel's Messiah and they're not what solved the problem of how to send uh, people to the moon. Those came from creativity. Uh, and the creative mode is not always, but typically in this sort of daydreaming mode when your mind is wandering. That's where your brain is able to put together thoughts that it hadn't seen linked before. It's able to make connections among things where you hadn't seen the connections before. It's that daydreaming mode, that mind-wandering mode, that can actually come up with the solution to a problem you thought you couldn't solve. I think that in order to solve the problems that face us in the world, uh, poverty, climate change, aggression around uh, in, in various regions, uh, unequal distribution of wealth, racism, uh, in order to solve these problems, uh, we need to be able to have some creative, smart people devoting sustained attention to them, not just five seconds here and there while they're doing a bunch of other things. Uh, and so I think because we've become so overstimulated uh, and we're not comfortable uh, sitting by ourselves and thinking, we need to grab that back. We need to take that back. Uh, just as one piece of evidence that we're not comfortable, a study came out last April that you may have read People were given a choice to either sit in a room alone with their own thoughts or receive a mild electric shock. <laughs> I think you see where this is going. They overwhelmingly chose the shock. <laughs> and yes, this was digital, this was digital age uh, uh, youngsters, but it was also people up to the age of 70 who preferred a mild electric shock to simply being able to sit alone with their own thoughts. So uh, I think we need to take that back, um, as I said. And I think that there's a role for the arts here. Literature, whether it's literary fiction or literary nonfiction, uh, painting, sculpture, music, dance, uh, I think uh, film, I think the arts are a way for us to contemplate and to get more in touch with a different pace. And reading is probably one of the best because unlike film uh, and TV, I got nothing against that, but it's not the same as being able to go at your own pace. And you've probably all had this experience that you're reading along and your eyes got ahead of you and you realize, oh, uh, I, I've got to go back a page because I don't know what I just read. Uh, that was your mind wandering mode. That's supposed to happen. That's part of the joy. It's, it's you exploring the ideas that the book raised. Literature is great for that.